You're watching Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ. And Pedro. We discuss U.S. Congress's report on crypto, and New York Town bans future Bitcoin mining, and Twitter is joining with the ban hammer on crypto advertising. All this and more on episode 247, here on Wednesday, March 21st. In the traditional markets, we have gold down to $1,306, silver is down to $16.16, oil is up to $63.50, The Dow is down to 24,725, and the 30-year Treasury yield is up to 3.11%. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin Cash is up to $1,045. Bitcoin Segwit is up to $8,835. Ethereum is down to $554. Dash is up to $427. And Litecoin is up to $168. Now, just a reminder that you can tune in to Neo Cash Radio every week. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and more. And we now have, of course, video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Neocache Media. So starting out with uh, an interesting, I guess, story. Yeah, so the uh, New York uh, town of Plattsburgh bans Bitcoin mining for 18 months. So cheap electrical rates have drawn down the crypto have drawn the cryptocurrency miners to this New York City near the hydroelectric dam on the St. Lawrence River. The power hungry Bitcoin miners are drawing more power than the city is allotted, causing them to have to buy power on the open market. So normally the city has some of the lowest electric rates in the world at four and a half cents per kilowatt hours less, which is less than half of the U.S. national average. The Plattsburgh City Council has responded to resident complaints regarding high electric bills and have placed a moratorium on new mining operations. This does not affect mining operations already going on, which is good news for Puerto Rican company CoinMint, which used 10% of the city's total power last month mining Bitcoin. Yeah, good for them. They're going to be allowed to continue to enjoy those cheap uh, energy rates. Yes, uh, but I can see why, uh, you know, residents would be uh, concerned seeing that their electric rates are going up. So yes. I, I understand, you know, why some people have asked about uh, whether they should ban that or not. Well, to be fair, the, this story did indicate that in winter it is not uncommon for their rates to go up, of course, because people are using electrical heaters for their homes. And so once they go over their allotment, then they have to buy money, uh, buy electric on the market. And that's when the prices really start to increase. Well, um, we talked on a previous episode about how the Mt. Gox trustee has been selling off large amounts of Bitcoin Segwit and Bitcoin Cash. Well, he doesn't think the sales are responsible for the price falling. Look, I don't think Kobayashi is fully responsible for the market woes, but this sell-off has unseen consequences. Let's for a moment look at a typical market player, Bob. Bob has put his own money into the market as a very personal reason for the decisions he makes. For Bob, the fiat is the means to an end, whereas the end is crypto holdings. Kobayashi is not Bob. His decisions are not made by the personal self-interest or self-preservation. Rather, he is making decisions from the opposite end of the spectrum. The coins are a means to the end, whereas the end is fiat. He is simply helping those people who have lost money from the the heist at the uh, MT Gox uh, platform uh, get their money back. So he's more concerned about getting the most fiat at the end. And, and of course, maybe he doesn't care as much as what effects this might have on the overall market. But of course, I think the market can recover from this sort of thing, Pedro. I don't think it's yeah. going to be a big issue. I, I mean, and if you think about it, the I, I think it's what, about $400 million uh, worth of Bitcoin that we're talking about. Uh, I would think that This Bitcoin back in the day when Mt. Gox was having issues being sold at the same rate would have a bigger negative impact on on the market. But I think the market right now is is too big for this to be, you know, the reason. Well, and and one thing to keep in mind is that the Mt. Gox heist or theft or loss, whatever it is, that was 850,000 Bitcoins. You know, that was a lot. That was a significant amount of Bitcoins, not only in the history, you know, the total amount of Bitcoins ever created, but for it to happen then at, at such a young age of the the uh, ecosystem, if you will, it definitely had a, a major impact. Yeah, those are bad days. Yeah, they were. <laughs> well, we covered them here on New Cash Radio uh, way back in 2014. So in the next story uh, from ethnews.com, they're reporting the U.S. District Court and the Federal Trade Commission move against uh, cryptocurrency schemes. So on March 16th, the Federal Court of Florida's Southern District upheld the Federal Trade Commission request, 
for a temporary restraining order against four individuals allegedly running cryptocurrency schemes. Thomas DeLuca, Louis Gaido, Eric Pinkston, and, Ch- and Scott Chandler are associated in various capacities with a, th- a certain chain referral scheme known as the Bitcoin funding team. The defendants are charged with using various combinations of social media platforms and conference calls to mislead investors with promises of significant returns for relatively small cryptocurrency payments, namely in Bitcoin or Litecoin. According to the FTC press release, claims made by the defendants included stating that Bitcoin funding team could turn the equivalent of just over $100 into $80,000 in monthly income. Wow. Wow. Imagine if somebody could do that. Uh, Deluca, why would someone believe that? I mean, why do people believe these outrageous claims? If you had a system that you could turn $100 into $80,000 in a month, you wouldn't want to let that information out, no. right? Because then, you know, the economy is not going to be able to sustain everyone that wants to get in on that. So DeLuca, Gato, and, and Pinkston are also associated with a scheme called My7 Network, while Chandler is additionally accused of promoting a deceptive cryptocurrency scheme called JetCoin. The FTC alleges that schemes were structured to ensue that the majority of participant investors would fail to recruit the investments they initially made. So, you know, every, everything like a, something similar to Bitcoin, uh, BitConnect and, you know, Ponzi schemes. Right. So please be vigilant in crypto investing. Uh, this is another example of scammers wanting to play on people's fears of missing out on crypto gains with promises of get rich quick schemes. People are now hearing from friends and family who've done well over the years with crypto and now want to get in on huge gains, whereas those people they know took years of hodling to see such high gains. So Right. That's what people are missing is that for a lot of the people, the early people who've gotten wealthy off of hodling their they, crypto. They've held for years. They held back when it was worth pennies, when it wasn't, when, when just, the, then when people laughed at it, why are you holding that? You know, when, when there were significant market corrections that were, you know, huge and, and they've held throughout all that time, that's the reason why they have a lot. And it's not because they found a system that can turn $100 into $80,000 in a month. No, they had, they had faith in the idea that, that crypto would go up in the future. And this is back, like, once again, when there wasn't an incentive to hold it. You know, there, there's no future that you could see where crypto was going to go up there was because very there's little, so much Very problems. little you can spend it on. I yes. mean, in, in those days, yes, these people made a lot of gains, but they also took huge risk. Yes. Well, the microblogging platform Twitter is following similar moves by Facebook and Google. With a story from skynews.com, they, uh, they've restricted financial advertisements due to concerns about illicit activities, they, which sort of dovetails with the story we just talked about yeah. previously. In approximately two weeks, the new advertising policy will be implemented. In two weeks, it currently stands to prohibit advertisements for initial coin offerings, token sales, and cryptocurrency wallets globally. Twitter may also ban ads for cryptocurrency exchanges, with some limited exceptions when the policy is launched. There are many, many accounts for newly created cryptocurrency companies, which would still be able to post freely. The only char- change would be that other users wouldn't be served sponsored content from these ICOs or wallet providers. It follows the announcement by Facebook in January that would be- begin prohibiting ads that promote financial products and services, which are, quote, frequently associated with misleading or deceptive promotional activities, unquote. Which, yes, there's so many. And you know what? I, the latest headline I saw was that some Russian uh, company or gentleman is suing Google about their uh, coming ban on cryptocurrency ads for the AdWords. And it's like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of scams. And, and I'm not saying they're, they're only coming out of Russia or any particular location. They're coming from everywhere around the world. But there are scams coming out of Russia. There are scams coming out of the United States. There are scams coming out of Europe. So, And, yeah. and I mean, Twitter and, and Google and... You know, Facebook, the, these are private companies, so they can have, you know, the policies they want. But it seems heavy handed in, in my opinion. And I think, you know, maybe in some time they'll allow the legit companies. So if they're going to have an across the board ban on all things crypto. So that means, you know, a company like Coinbase or Ledger couldn't advertise. I mean, these are legit companies that aren't scamming anyone. Uh, U.S. Congress had a joint economic uh, issued a joint economic report, and they dedicated an entire chapter to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Let's look at some of the highlights, Pedro. Yep. So um, this is a pretty big report, uh, and there was, as you as you mentioned, the whole section on on blockchain. So here we're going to go over some of the points uh, for our for our listeners. So the first one is. 
they came out and said blockchain looks like the new internet. Um, so to quote from the document, the buzz surrounding digital currencies resembles the internet excitement in the late 1990s when people recognized technology companies could change the world. Who else has been saying that, JJ? Uh, well, you know, honestly, I think everybody has been saying that, Pedro. Yes. Yes. Uh, but yes, that, so they're, they're catching on. That's good. Uh, number two, we're looking at cryptocurrencies could outshine government fiat. Quote, some critics of currencies controlled by government fiat welcome cryptocurrencies because their supply is pre-programmed and perceived as unchangeable, unquote. Yes. Looks like somebody finally got it. Yeah, in fact, in, you know, we, we uh, recently had a, a chat with um, a gentleman who's offering banking services to us, uh, or, or I've talked to someone about that, and... The, they, the, you know, he looks at, at crypto and, and sees very much a competitor for the fiat services and fiat markets. And it makes sense to see that. Absolutely. The, the other uh, point they brought up was uh, blockchain is secure and efficient. So, quote, blockchain technology offers a decentralized, secure and efficient way to store almost any form of data across multiple platforms. Yes, it will make everything more efficient because of the fact that you don't need to have uh, you know, specialized people, specialized servers, and, and you know, like you just have this one dude who handles this one job. Now you have distributed, you're distributing the, uh, the effort across many computers and many uh, individuals too. Uh, blockchain number four, blockchain may transform industries. Quote, for instance, healthcare providers, patients, and policymakers continue searching for portable and secure ways to store medical records digitally, unquote. A, a, perfect, uh, a perfect place. I mean, the blockchain can ostensibly store anything encrypted, and yet you can still prove that, you know, at some point later, or in, you can even prove things without showing it. And then at, the, at some point, if you do have to show something, you can prove that this, this document is the exact document I uploaded. Here's a hash of the current document, and the hash of the old one is on the blockchain. You can compare the two hashes. And if you understand hashing technology, you can understand why that would be a very uh, a good source of proof. Indeed. And, um, you know, I encourage listeners to consider, you know, reading. We'll have a link to the document. They go on to other examples, other very detailed examples in the power industry and such. It really shows that, you know, whoever was involved in writing this document, it does see the potential of crypto. And and they come to um, an overall conclusion. Uh, and, and we took a snippet of, of, of that document, quote, technology presents evolving technologies and generates new solutions. Blockchain technology essentially stores and transmits data securely in large volume and at high speeds. So far, the technology has proven largely resistant to hacking. And given this feature, developers first applied it to digital currencies. Yet blockchain has many more potential applications, such as portable medical records and securing the critical financial and energy infrastructure that the report identified. And this is pretty big. Yes. This is pretty big conclusion coming from uh, coming from Congress. Um, yeah. Well, one thing I really like about this is they prove out that it's largely resistant to hacking, and developers first applied it to digital currencies. Now, this another genius stroke by Satoshi to take this technology and to use it first for the simplest but the most basic need of currency, but it also puts a big target on it. So it makes it a very big target for attackers to come after because of the currency, but the, the fact that you can buy and sell things, that that's the whole point of riches, you know what I'm saying, is currency. So it's like here, and it's proven nine years later, no one has been able to hack the actual blockchain itself. You know, people have hacked into other people's computers and gained access to wallets through social engineering in any number of different ways, but no one has hacked into the blockchain and reversed or changed blocks that have happened in the past. And, and that's, I mean, that's very significant, especially with the value of Bitcoin going up and the the ability to use that Bitcoin to, to purchase things. So, you know, people are trying, um, but so far, you know, the, the actual protocol itself is secure. Right. Well, there were some overall recommendations from the report, and we'll just go right through them quick here. Uh, policymakers and the public should become more familiar with digital currencies and other uses of blockchain technology, which have a wide range of applications in the future. Yes. I mean, that's familiarity is a huge stepping stone and a lot of people still don't even know it exists, and, let and, alone what and, it is. And this report is acknowledging that there's future applications that we no one's thought up of yet. Right. 
Uh, regulators should continue to coordinate among each other to guaranteeing coherent policy fr- frameworks, definitions, and jurisdiction. Another big issue is that, that too many people, I guess, didn't know what foot to step off on or if they were going to step on someone else's toes. So there's a lot of issues regarding clarity. And once again, a lot of these businesses that are starting up, they need this clarity so that they know what they're going to do, what what steps they have to, to take and what what forms they have to fill out, what people they have to talk to. So this clarity will help expedite the growth of American businesses. Uh, number three, policymakers, regulators, and entrepreneurs should continue to work together in, to ensure development. Developers can deploy these new blockchain technologies quickly and in a manner that protects Americans from fraud, theft, and abuse while ensuring compliance with relevant regulations. That's obvious. Yeah, I, I mean, we're not going to get blockchain to, to grow if people, uh, if the people in general in mass are afraid that it's, you know, only for scammers, only for hackers. You know, it needs to have that reputation behind it that there are legit businesses, which there are, behind it. And so, you know, they call that out at that point. Uh, Government agencies at all levels should consider and examine new uses for this technology that could make the government more efficient in performing its functions. Yes. I mean, this is probably the the government's uh, hardest goal to reach. But uh, with that said, we've we've seen uh, governments out there in the Eastern Bloc that are very aggressively getting into using blockchain technology to make their functions more efficient for record keeping for, you know, property transfer. Right. And our final, a final little story for us here that is the, is something we sort of hinted at, I guess, uh, the Donald Tr- President Donald Trump signed an executive order barring American citizens and residents from undertaking transactions or investing in digital currencies or tokens tied to the Ven- Venezuelan government, which were issued on or after July, uh, January 9th, 2018. We're talking about the Venezuelan Petro. Uh, the petro backed uh, cryptocurrency that they're ostensibly creating. But who would want to buy it anyway? I mean, I don't understand why anyone would. That's a lot of risk. Do, I don't understand. Do, do you know who wants to buy it now? People that heard it for the first time in this ban. Like with any ban on anything, all it does is bring attention to it. That's so it would be interesting to see if the price. If there was any price blip up or down anyway on on the petro, but I, I'm honestly not paying any attention to the petro, and I'm I'm really not looking to cover it other than to other than this final this final little final piece story. Here. I mean, <laughs> and we've talked about tether and why there's issues with tether, but then they went one step further. It's not like oh, it's not like a, a, tether you, you is ostensibly redeemable for U.S. dollars, which okay, so you could see how that could happen over the internet. You can have someone send you dollars over the internet through your bank account or PayPal or some other way. But how do you have someone send you a barrel of oil? Like is that is that coming like yeah, free I'd like shipping? To, I'd that, like to cash this crypto in for my you know point, my, point seven five fifty five gallon barrel of oil. Right. What is, where, where are we gonna put that? Well, I mean, some people thought it was interesting and, and bought it, but. That, you know what? That's the I thing is that them. I don't know. No, they, you know, it could be on the blockchain. There could be some proof out there as to, to the purchases that were made. But then again, I don't know exactly who bought them. If it's all been, you know, fraudulent, I don't know. But uh, well, it's run by a single entity, so they can, you know, report anything they want. But well, it's, it's run by an entity which we know is untrustworthy. Correct. So yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Looking at that right there. Uh, any content on the Neo Cash Radio podcast and our website should not be regarded as financial or legal advice. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest or gamble more than you're willing to lose. And always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it in a wallet whose private keys you control. For Neo Cash Radio, this is JJ. And this is Pedro. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. NeoCashRadio.com.